How's it going guys? This is Joshua from Motiva Online Instructors. Today I'm going to be solving this integral using the floor function. And the floor function is has another name, it's called the greatest integer function. Okay. Now, to be able to solve this integral, I'm going to need a, a equivalent definition for the floor function. So let's go to that. It says... It is equivalent to say that the floor function of a function inside is equal to an integer m if and only if m is less or equal than f of x less than m plus 1. Okay? And here, f of x is the function inside the integer function. Okay? Now, what is our f of x here? Well, f of x here is just x. Okay? So f of x here is equal to x, okay? And now the best way to solve this integer is by doing this table, okay? And here, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about this table. Now look at here. Here we have the integral for x, and here we have the integral for m less than or equal than f of x less than m plus one. And here we have the values for the integer of f of x, okay? Which is equal to this m. Now, notice that I'm always going to have integers for f of x, not necessarily the same for x, okay? But in x, we're going to start with our lowest bound, which is minus 2. So for, for x, we have minus 2 less than or equal than x less than the number that comes here depends on, on the value here in the function. So I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to write our smallest uh, value. Since f of x is x, our smallest value is going to be minus 2, right? Because x is minus 2. So it's going to be x and less than m plus 1. So minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, okay? Now, minus 1, so if we restrict minus 2 to minus 1, we are going to have a restriction in f of x, which is x, okay? So we have the same restriction, okay? I'm going to show other examples where this doesn't happen, okay? So what is the value? Well, the value here is minus 2, okay? Now we go to our next value. Well, again, what comes next well minus one right x and one and zero so for this interval like i said it's the same thing so it's just this and the value is minus one and where to stop well for x we're gonna go to one so that's where we're gonna stop here for the interval of x so let's keep going here we got zero and one here we got zero and one so since we already reach one which is the our upper limit sum then that's our our that's the end of this table okay it's like an algorithm we've come to the conclusion of it so our last value is zero okay now that we have those values he, these are the values that matter right now okay we can translate these values into the integral. So this integral here becomes what? This integral here becomes, it's gonna be equal to the integral from where to what? From minus two to minus one of the integer function dx plus from minus one to zero of the same thing plus zero to one of the same function. Okay, now the reason we have these values is that now we can substitute each value for each interval, and that's what we wanted to do in the first way, in the first place. That's why we want these values. So this becomes the integral from minus two to minus one of minus two 
plus minus one to zero of minus one plus zero to one of zero. Okay? Now, what is this equal to? Well, the integral of a constant is just x, so this is minus two x evaluated from minus two to minus one plus negative one x evaluated from minus one to zero plus zero x evaluated from zero to one. Now, of course, the integral of zero is zero because once you multiply by zero, it becomes zero. So we, we, we can ignore this term. This becomes minus two times minus one minus minus two minus one, zero minus minus one. And this becomes minus two minus one plus two minus one plus one. And this is equal to minus two times one minus one, which is minus two minus one, which is equal to minus three. Okay. And that's our answer, guys. Thanks for watching again. This is Joshua from Multiwap.